Shark Bay is this world heritage wilderness wonderland. Shallow water for as far as the eye can see. And you get out into the deeper water and you've got, you know, these humpback whale populations everywhere. We are quite privileged to work in that area. The environment is pristine. It's God's country, isn't it? It's, it's, it's beautiful out there. You know, one of the last untouched places. My dad, he was a commercial fisherman, as was his grandfather. I was always the one, I was like my dad's shadow. I just wanted to be on the boat all the time. If he was fixing the dinghy, I was there. If he was fixing nets on the oval, I was there. I just loved it. But yeah, my dad never wanted me to, um, wanted me to be around fishing. Just one day I walked into my boss and said, I'm gonna resign and I'm gonna go and do a science degree in fisheries management. And he's like, yeah, but you're an artist. And I'm like, not anymore, I'm not. So I've never looked back. The greatest success of the fishery is to operate in a World Heritage area and trawl. You know, working in an area like that comes with a great deal of responsibility. For it to be world's best fisheries management, it needs to be underpinned by really good science. And, um, you know, the science is needed to ensure that sustainability is there, provide the community confidence, the wreck fishing sector confidence, the consumer of prawns confidence that, um, you know, science is driving good management decisions. We have all the measures in place that we need to operate in the fishery. So we have turtle exclusion devices, fish eyes on our nets. The Department of Primary Industries has a, um, it's called a harvest strategy and that sets the standard for the, for the season. So they'll do surveys at the start of the season or prior to um, and then they'll do periodic surveys every sort of three months in between and then there'll be an industry survey every sort of two trips. If there's a certain catch per kilo uh, rate drops off then we'll close that, that area and then we'll go into the next area. And it's, it's all about you know, keeping it sustainable. From six to 10, I wanted to be a fish factory processor. I wanted to be a fish factory processor. And then I saw my brothers like, and I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna be a fish factory processor. Because number one, I've gotta be underneath those two within the system and that's not going to work. So I said to Dad and Mum, um, I said, well, I said, I can be cooking the seafood that you catch. And I think a lot of people think that the prawn industry isn't sustainable. Um, but my dad had been doing it for 35 years. Um, they've been doing it for 80 odd years in Shark Bay. Yeah, I think the Shark Bay prawn fishery is really well managed. Um, we, you know, we're quite a big supporter of the Marine Stewardship Council process and we're really pleased to see that fishery go through that process. I think the guys decided they wanted to go down that path to be able to give some confidence that what they were doing was sustainable. You know, making sure that their bycatch management was sufficient, um, making sure that they um, understood the habitat that they were working on and also just make decisions and the information about the fishery just far more transparent to people who actually want to find out about it. I love working with fisheries that can provide really good seafood for people and feel proud about, you know, like where it's come from and that it's clean and that it's caught properly and that actually means something to me. I think you know, Shark Bay is a really good example of where you can get the recreational sector and the commercial sector, tourism sector, charter sector all working together. Everybody loves to go, get out there and wet a line and catch these magnificent snapper and then you know, at the end of the day go to the pub and get a bowl, a bowl of prawns you know, with your beer. So it's part of the whole Shark Bay experience. I don't think it's easy being a fisherman. It is such a, a highly regulated industry. The arrangements are really complex. You know, they're away from home, they're away from their families. They're fishing at night. Sometimes things go wrong, the weather's bad. Despite that really difficult working environment, I'm most proud of the fact that they, you know, continue to operate in a place like that and produce these, this incredible seafood for people to buy and in the most sustainable manner that they can.